Good morning. My name is Nikki Mathis. I'm rector at St. Gregory the Great Episcopal Church here in Athens, Georgia. To all of our home folks in our parish, welcome. And if you are just visiting with us today, welcome home. Just a few announcements before we begin today's service of worship. Um, in the bulletin, you will find that right after the collect of purity, um, I will begin to say glory to God in the highest. Please feel free to join me, even though that's not in the bulletin. I apologize for that. That is my fault. Guess who the last person that gets to approve the final copy of the bulletin is? That would be me. And so I approved it, forgetting that we needed to say the Gloria. So the Gloria is on page 356 of the Book of Common Prayer. You can find the BCP online just by putting that in your browser. If you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, um, go straight to Holy Eucharist, right to, and on the second page of that Holy Eucharist, you will find the Gloria. So please join us um, in saying that when we get to that portion of the service. Also wanted to let you know that the today's collect, immediately after the prayers of the people, is a prayer for this time in our lives by Cameron Wiggins Bellum. Also, at communion, I would like for you to please be mindful that even though the circumstances permit us from gathering and having communion, there is such a thing as spiritual communion. If you accessed our bulletin either on our website or at the link, link under this service, link, link under this service, the very first page of our bulletin talks about spiritual communion which simply means that those who aren't able to receive physically still receive the benefits, all the benefits, forgiveness of sins, imparting of grace, all of that, um, simply by worshiping with us at that time. So please do know that you can do that. And at the time of the Eucharist, I will say one of the three pairs available, but you're at home. So you can say whichever one of these three that you would like. Um, but we will have a prayer for spiritual communion in today's service. Also, thank you to those who have been stalwart in your giving. Um, also to those who have been very generous in their giving, additional giving 
to the discretionary fund as we try to help those who are struggling during this very uncertain economic time. If you are able to give, that is excellent. If you are not able to give, that is also excellent because God does not love you any less. God loves us exactly the same, whether we are able to give or unable to give. And so when I say the offertory sentence, please know that that's a fine time to give online if that's how you give and if you're able to give. And also please know that if you're unable to give, God sees your heart and loves you just the same. Those are all the announcements we have for this morning. So we will now have our service begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will say together the Gloria that is found on page 356 of the Book of Common Prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Acts. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We'll say the psalm together, Psalm 23, found in the bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along bright pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. 
For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, clearly Jesus and I had different English teachers. My teacher said that when using a metaphor in a piece, we had to pick one and be consistent throughout. Whoever taught Jesus must have said, pick as many as you can and go for it. Because on this Good Shepherd Sunday, Jesus is not only the Good Shepherd, he's also somehow the gate. And not only that, but if we go nine chapters back or eight verses further than our gospel for today, he's also the lamb who gives his life. Now, if I didn't know any better, I would think he would he was being like those little kids in Sunday school plays that demand to play not only the lead, but every single part so they can have the stage. Or maybe being like some of us grown folk who have control issues. So we do all the things because we know nobody else can do it the way we like to have it done. And if you ask my husband, he will tell you that his wife resembles that remark but thank you, thank you, Jesus, that's a whole other sermon, so we're going to leave that alone today. So anywho, since we know Jesus is neither a demanding child nor controlling adult, what does this gospel with the triple play of gate, shepherd, and lamb have to do with our lives today? While some of us may have spectacular farms or gardens, we don't live in a majority agrarian culture. And shoot, y'all still know I firmly believe that outside is the space between my car and the building I'm trying to get in. So we know I know nothing about sheep and shepherd and gates. But I do know that in this time of contradictive, contradicting information, when public health advisements stand in opposition to government edicts or the lack thereof, I do want to depend on somebody's voice being consistently known to be for my good. 
And in this passage, Jesus says that's the divine voice of the good shepherd. In this time of social isolation, the stripping away of what used to be so normal, gathering for church services, actually having funerals when someone we love leaves us, hugging and handshakes from our friends and our neighbors. I want something solid that says, I still belong. I'm still beloved. I'm still in community. And Jesus says, that's him the gate that surrounds and gathers us, even when former societal norms no longer can. And I need somebody who understands the human need for touch and connection, the grief over needless deaths, a disproportionate number of those being black and brown folks, the fear for those forced to return to work where there have been outbreaks because they won't receive any unemployment income if they don't, even though it may very well kill them or someone in their families. And Jesus says, yes, I've been in those shoes of the oppressed and the sick and the lonely and rejected. Yes, I am the lamb, God with skin on, who lived life just like we do, knowing what it's like to have this heart and these bodies and these minds, who also took on sin and death for us and he won. For those of us who are Christians, I believe that Jesus is reminding us in this morning's gospel that he has our back. Even if we don't feel it, he has everything we need, both for troubled times and times of unmitigated joy. Now, keep in mind, when, every, when I say that Jesus has everything we need, I'm not talking prosperity gospel or magical thinking, especially now, when we know there are people, faithful people who need jobs and don't have them, folks who need safety and can't get it. Folks who are hungry and homeless, people who are sick, some of them dying, both in isolation and fear. Jesus is being, being quite clear that he is speaking about his being fully occupied with our spiritual needs, especially in this time. As the shepherd, he is our nurturer, our caretaker, our protector, reassuring us that we do know his voice, whether or not we feel like we do. And as the gate, Jesus is the way to abundant life for us. Yes, abundant life even in a pandemic, meaning we are able to, with the strength of God in us, be present for all the grief, all the fear, and all the joy, those moments of joy that come when someone connects to us or when we are able to give or when we are able to receive the openness, when we are able to share what we need with one another. Sister, I really could use a hundred for the rent this month. Brother, I really could stand a walk around the neighborhood with you with my gloves and my mask and six feet between us, but I need to have somebody to walk with me. Fam, I really do need your prayers. All of that is part of the joy and openness and presence of abundant life. And we also know that we are never, ever alone without somebody who understands, without somebody who is an advocate, without somebody who is holding our hand along the way, even if we are all by ourselves in our house every minute of every day. Because Jesus, being human in a particular time and place, was also divine love with skin on. Somehow in all the mysterious and wondrous ways of the Almighty, he had the same massive width, depth, and height of divine love that existed before time, through time, and that will be here when time is no more. 
that Jesus holds our hand in the early hours of the morning when we can't sleep. That Jesus holds our shoulders when they are shaking with our tears. That Jesus holds us when we are frightened. I believe that this morning, Jesus wants us to know this, that right now we are connected, we are tethered, we are anchored to God and ourselves and to one another through divine love and belonging on his dime that is without any effort of our own. So if you're trying to pray and can't, if you're trying to be present and can't, if you're trying to understand what's going on and can't, that's okay. Jesus is telling you he has got it all and you are still in his arms. And that just like sheep, we can be trusted to, even if we wander away for a minute or fall in a ditch, still recognize the divine voice that soothes and calls and teaches and thereby allows Jesus to just pick us up and bring us to wherever we need to be. That's what I want right now. And maybe that's what you want right now. And if so, you're in the right place because that is what you have, that spiritual comfort and security because we found it inside the gate under the care of a shepherd as we rest near the lamb. Let us respond to the word of God in the words of the Maxine Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning may be found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all, all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you that, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, especially Michael, Rob, Paul, and Don, and all priests and deacons, especially Nikki and Christina, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our president, Donald, our governor, Brian, and our mayor, Kelly, that there may be justice and, and peace on the earth. earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our, our works may find favor in your sight. sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may be delivered, delivered from their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Beth Hodges, Lee Hodges' mother, and Tammy Bowman's sister, Kim. 
let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we, we also come, come to share in your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and to those of others. We pray especially for the Bowman family, the Hodges family, Stephanie, Roseanne, Stephen, Doug, Alice, George, Tina, Catherine, Connolly, Deborah, Mary, Gail, Jimmy, Jean, Sandy, Susan, Shelby, Sarah, Roger, Martha, Jack, Stanley, Tammy, Cecil, Bill, Sally, Patrick, Harold, Diane, Stephen, Ken, Neil, Anne, Paula, John, Linda, Gwen, Barbara, Dusty, Daniel, Karen, Michael, Michelle, Meredith, Heather, Matt, Pete, Sophia, Jill, Ruth, Samantha, Jennifer, Chip, and Buddy. Our men and women in the armed forces, especially Patrick, Christopher, Gabrielle, Nathan, Mark, Tom, James, and Jonathan, I invite your prayers. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give special thanks for Jean Bianchi, Dakota Hamlin, Albert Lang, Maria Twent, Ray Kretzer, Anna Ferguson, Jeff Buckley, Sadie Bray, Jack Beach, and Everett Krauss, who celebrate their birthdays this week. And for Don and Catherine Mushalt, Jim and Lane Norton, and John and Cindy Vale, who celebrate their anniversaries this week. I invite your thanksgivings. Most holy God, on whom we may cast all our care, may those of us who are merely inconvenienced remember those of us whose lives are at stake. May those of us who have no risk factors remember those of us most vulnerable. May those of us who have the luxury of working from home remember those of us who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May those of us who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those of us whose children will go hungry with no school meals. May those of us who have to cancel our trips remember those of us with no place to go. May those of us who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those of us who have no margin at all. May those of us who settle in for quarantine at home remember those of us who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, whose arms of love embrace us all. And the church said, Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Erhu ki gabe. Erhu ki gabe. Erhu ki gabe. Let us with great gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have and mercy, Lord, for we are sinners, sinners in your sight. Again and again you call us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open the way for, of freedom and peace. By, by his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for us the body and the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to gather spiritually as a family under God and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. For those of us who are at home, we will now pray, pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot physically consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we may, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our post-communion prayer can be found in the bulletin and also on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing, well-pleasing in his sight, in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let, us, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Yay! Amen.